Good morning, everybody. Thank you for your patience this morning. Usually we have a 9.30 a.m. webinar our time, but for some reason today I had it set for 9 a.m. and I was still twisting wire over there in the studio. And I got a text from our wonderful computer guru and said, hey, you got a webinar. So anyway, <laughs> thank you guys very much for, for bearing with us here this morning. Um, hey, good to see you guys that are popping up here. And yes, definitely happy Friday. Um, so I was going to run over and grab the fairy wand too, because somebody asked me about... Um, how to use a fairy wand here. So we'll uh, we'll do some play in here today as well. Um, at the end of the webinar, I'd really like to walk you guys through um, something that we've been doing here recently and an energetic that's been put in the tools and that is the quantum heart. Um, this is a pretty phenomenal space that we can hold that we create. Um, anyway, here at the end of the the 50 questions will we'll do a, a little meditation journey work all right so one of the one of the questions from the internet was um about the energetic transformation package and the the tools that come in it um basically the energetic transformation kit is one of the kits that we have um on sale right now that has a water ring, a Wi-Fi ring, a golden fire coil pendant. Then it also has a two and a half inch generator. This is the four inch. It has the disc that you put onto the electrical outlet um, and the cell phone tab. So basically the energetic transformation kit is one where the rings are interchangeable like the water ring can be used for electronics the wi-fi ring doesn't have to be used on wi-fi it can be used anywhere it can be used with your water bottle it can be used as a pendant um, the wi-fi ring is actually the outer ring on the gateway pendant um, so there's the the tools that come in that kit are very versatile um, and basically it's it's something that the directions that we give to to use those tools um you know there's the quick webinar or else even the dis product descriptions on the energetic transformation kit that uh, just gives some basic ideas on how to utilize each one of those and um for for further in-depth questions we can certainly you know keep working on answering those if you don't find those on the specific product webinar um, Let's see, and just checking over here um, on chat. So we got so we got some questions on both chat and under our questions tab here. Um, I guess before I start with the chat or the questions tab, would like to invite you guys to do three breaths with me to go into the heart space. Because I know I need it for being on the run here, just so that I'm calm and settled. Um, so going into the sacred space of the heart, it's nothing more than putting your attention onto your physical heart where we carry our light, our connection to, to source, soul, creator, God. So as you close your eyes, if you wish, and put your attention onto your heart and take a deep breath in from the earth, breathing in that light, that loving energy of the earth from the heart of Gaia, from the heart of earth, right up into your heart. The second breath is connecting to soul, source, creator, God, breathing in that unconditional loving energy into the heart. And the third breath is breathing both of those energies into your heart, mixing them together and sending them out both ways. So then you become that conduit, that physical grounding, for the energy of source, for the energy of the earth, and it's right here in the heart. And when you do that last breath, it just brings your consciousness from the head 
back into the heart. Um, anyway, thank you for taking the breaths with me here. All right, so we'll start here. Um, I'm just going to answer a question here on chat real quick. Would love to know more distinctions on the earth resonance ring in general, but also on the body. Um, so for the earth resonance ring, which is, this is the smaller earth resonance ring that we make for dancing with water. Then we have the larger version of the earth resonance ring that we make for the gals at dancing with water. These are our two water rings in the earth resonance. Now the, the rings themselves are actually the 333 megahertz ring. Um, the earth resonance is simply the etheric template, the, the higher aspect of the tools that we bring in. So the higher aspect of these um, 333 rings that are called the earth resonance ring, it is simply bringing through um, the energetics of water. It is holding the space for water and all the earth elementals to, to come through the rings, the frequencies and properties of them. So within the earth resonance ring, it is simply um, more of a grounding, more of an earth connecting because we're bringing through the frequencies and properties of the earth, of the earth elemental, such as fire, water, all of it. That's where the earth resonance rings are. Um, and the question on how they relate to the physical body, um, you know, they, they are grounding, um, but any of the tensor fields too are, are also grounding, but they're also expanding, they're raising frequency and vibration of the physical body. So the earth resonance rings can certainly be used as a standalone ring with the body as well. Um, and again, it's, it's one of those things of just intuiting how to use a lot of these tools because we don't want to limit their, their use because people use the, the tools in a pretty phenomenal way that ways that we wouldn't have thought of. Um, so please just play. Um, and the earth resonance rings are phenomenal rings. Um, and then the question, if you can, how do your products interact with Sperling harmonizers, Tesla crimple plates, et cetera? Do they enhance? And if so, which way? So the, the tensor fields are working with all energy tools. They're working with organite. They're working with um, electronic frequency devices. They're working with light spectrums. Um, and so other tensor tools, such as from uh, Slim Sperling's widow uh, from Light Life Technologies, yeah, they, they all work together. Um, they harmonize together. And so like Organite, um, you know, it's been a few years, but a lot of Orgone or a lot of Organite pieces I've just haven't resonated with because they carry the energetics of the person, of their intent, everything else and they're they're basically intention devices and their frequency they're they're producing the frequencies and so some of them i just they don't resonate with me but I, if i put a tensor ring with that piece of organite it harmonizes it to where i can better resonate with it uh, same with tesla purple plates with with all the the spurling tools um then a question, without us setting an intention for the water ring, does it clear the chemicals in the water? So the water rings work without intentions. You don't have to put your intentions with there. What the rings are going to do with any of the, 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 the chemicals, the, the impurities within the water, they don't act as a water purifier. Now, the tensor fields will restructure the water to where like heavy minerals things like that can precipitate out easier it will also bring it to a higher spin rate to where chlorine will dissipate quicker um, we have seen where it takes um, fluoride uh, not the naturally occurring but the kind that is put into every municipal water that is over 5,000 people in the united states we're seeing that it is changing that fluoride into something healthful and beneficial. So it is doing what we're seeing as a molecular change with the fluoride. Now, Dances with Water has done some, some studies with that. Um, we did a test with it, but the lab that we tested our fluoride transformation with the rings, that lab was 
it, their intent overrided it because, you know, and, and that's what like Dr. Emoto's work will show is how well our intentions and our emotions can affect water. Well, the, the people who were testing our, our rings with fluoride were like, no, that's not going to work. No way. Ain't going to do it. But yeah, we'll charge us money to do the test anyway. So when we tested for the, the reduction of fluoride within water, it didn't work for us. But we're seeing that that is, is a reality. Um, so it's not going to necessarily filter. It does not filter your water whatsoever, but it changes water not only on a physical form, but it changes water energetically, which is the biggest thing. But it does change water on the physical form because it restructures water to its original crystalline structure of the H2O. Again, check out Dancing with Water, the new science of water, dancingwithwater.com, um, because it walks through this book right here. Their website as well is phenomenal. You can get this book on our on our website. It's the same price as is on dancingwithwater.com. But um, they they walk you through a lot of really phenomenal things with water. And that's we make the water rings for for dancing with water. All right. Um, Justine, so yes, how do I use the fairy wand? And then I'm gonna switch over to the questions tab here. Um, the fairy wand is is one, and I meant to grab a fairy wand here this morning so I could show you, but the fairy wand is similar looking in appearance, similar in appearance to the um, shaman's wand. It is simply that twisted copper wand. Now the fairy wand is a lot smaller. You know, we're using a lighter gauge wire for the fairy wand, plus it comes with the lanyard. That fairy wand is the golden fire frequency. So basically when I twist that wire and I'm holding the space for the Fey to come in, it, all that higher aspects, all the heart centered, you know, that's what comes in. Uh, so when the Fey come in, it's really cool to see because it's like they just, they're, they're surrounding that whole wire as you're twisting it. They're in that field. So basically we're holding that field for the Fey as we're twisting that wire when we when we cut those specific lengths of that golden fire measure and we're making that wand the fair present they're welded and then all of that is sealed within there so the the fairy wand is connecting in with that realm of the fey but it's also carrying the frequency of the golden fire now with your fairy wand that comes on the lanyard you can just carry it wear it forget about it it's a great one for kids it's the golden fire it's playful it's gentle um but yeah, it's very transformative, protective, if you will. And so how to use it, um, there's a simple little instruction card that comes with it, which basically just says you hold on to the wand, you can close your eyes, go into the heart space, and you can connect with that the fey realm, with the fairy. And then when you do, then basically you can start working with them because only within that realm, when you're holding that wand, and only the ones that are in the highest and best for each person are going to step forward and come through. Um, because within that field, it's, it's the only ones allowed into that field are the heart centered ones, those higher consciousness ones. So when you connect with the, the Fey realm, basically you can ask them for whatever style of, of work that you need, because whatever one comes forward, it already knows what it is, you know, that you're seeking. Um, so that's one way you can work with them and on a consciousness level. Um, another way is just on a physical level, using the wand, running energy, or using it passively by wearing it as a pendant. All right, so we're going to go over here to the questions tab for a bit. Um, what material would you recommend to clean and polish the silver infinite light pendant? That is a very good question. Um, we have not experimented enough with polishing silver. I know we probably should, but for all of us personally who wear them, you know, they get the, the sterling silver, which my clasps are sterling silver. Most of these clasps are the, the um, infinity bracelets. All the ones that we sell are pure silver. Mine are sterling, and then you can kind of see how it gets that more of a patina look to it which that patina look, you know, we all, most of us love that. But as far as to get your infinite light pendant, which is solid silver, 
back to that fine finish. I've heard people that use a a really fine toothpaste, you know, something that doesn't have a heavy grit with it. Um, I've heard people using bacon, baking soda, um, water and baking soda. I've heard people who dip, dip it in vinegar baths. Um, you know, basically any mild acid like that will clean copper as well as taking some of the gunk off of the silver. But for the actual polishing it, bringing it to that sheen again, that's where I've heard people using toothpaste on them. But you can also go out and purchase any of the other silver polished products. Most of them recommend just simply a polishing cloth, um, a microfiber cloth. And, um, you know, so my apologies that we have not done the experimentation with home cleaning of these. How we polish things in the shop is we use a buffing wheel um, with a polished compound and we run it on the buffing wheel and then we scrub it off because it's a water soluble. So we scrub it off and then this is the finished product. So instead of going out and getting a buffing wheel, um, I'm sorry, but you probably just have to look into what style of um, silver polish that you can you can access easily and what you want to pay for. Um, again, simplest method would be a toothbrush and baking soda. Um, let's see. Just want to thank for the gifts, kicking the free. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Um, would you suggest to put the Silver Series Golden Fire Generator in the steel water jug? Yeah, you can totally put any of the silver into into a water jug. Um, the the Silver Series Generator is a yep that one is a pure silver. Um, so yeah, that's fine to go inside of water. Um, can we ever wear or be surrounded by too many of the tools? No. Um, when when you start adding tools together, they can amplify each other. So I mean, we've seen where you add one ring to another ring, and it can increase the potency of the field by by a small percent. But you never can receive too much. You you can't be have too much of a field of, of the tensor fields, you know, excluding standing in a chamber or trying to sleep in a chamber or sleeping under a pyramid. At that point, yeah, those energies can get to be a little too much. Um, but as far as just any of the tools having around you, sleeping with practitioner sets above your head, wearing 18 pendants, all of that, it's not going to have any detrimental effect. Um, it's actually, something that is a self-regulating field. And that's the beautiful thing about these tools is that they are like a smart tool. They're a smart field. They are self-regulating and the self that is regulating is the higher self. And so that is, you know, you can never get too much because basically within, like even within the water ring is the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet, um, all the rays of light, all that stuff. And if this was just a straight frequency emitter, we would not be able to handle it. But it is basically a field that contains all of that. And the regulate the self-regulating part is our higher consciousness, our higher selves that are allowing through whatever it is that we need at any given moment. Um, let's see. And then Martin asks, I was hoping to use a silver infinite heart to drop inside my water bottle. However, a while ago, you said that some of the silver tools had a toxic solder, but that you're moving to a solder of pure silver. Are the silver infinite hearts now using silver solder? Um, yes. So what, what it was is that the, the solder that we were using for um, the, the jewelry quality stuff, like these guys for the, for the Taurus pendant, we're using a, um, a sterling silver solder. It's not that there's anything toxic, but it's just sterling silver contains trace amounts of copper, which can turn green um, and it can leach into the water, which it takes a lot of sterling silver to leach into the water to make it detrimental. You know, and, it, and it's only, it would be detrimental only because of getting too much copper 
into your system orally. So now then with the silver infinities, we are using a pure silver solder. So it is okay now. And then the infinities themselves are pure silver. So yes, you can put the, um, the silver infinity itself into a water bottle without having to have any of the sterling silver within it. Um, Christopher, you mentioned a tiny ascension pyramid in your car. Can you show us a post? <laughs> you know, Christopher, I got a different car, and so that pyramid I need to get out of my box and it and set it back up. Um, the mini, the mini ascension pyramid um, I'd mentioned once. It sits on the dash of my car usually, and um, but you'd be happy to know, Christopher, we are working on it. Um, I'm heading up to the city today to pick up little 60 degree pyramids to start making pyramid molds. And we're gonna create a little pyramid mold with sacred major legs, with a coil hanging out the bottom and little rings up in the epoxy. And they are gonna be our new quantine, quantum gridding tool. And those little pyramids are gonna be pretty phenomenal. So we'll have some smaller pyramids available that are going to be doing some great things. But yeah, Christopher, I'll see if I can get that a good picture of that mini pyramid that sits on my dash for you. Uh, when we leave a container of water, be this a gallon or five gallon container for 24 hours or more on the rings, we notice the bottom of the container be glass or plastic, a coat of green algae forms and the water tastes really good. Interesting. You know, and I've never, I guess, you know, if you have water that is not city water, because city water has enough chlorine in it that it's not going to allow, you know, algae growth to occur very fast at all. Um, and I've often wondered about that. Ethan was, was remarking how they leave a water ring and they set their water on it and they get a little film of algae on the bottom, which is interesting because that's been a concept that I've been considering here for years is creating live water that um, that's beneficial, that contains the beneficial bacteria for you, um, and something that can be in a controlled space to where it's not uh, contaminated um, with other bacteria. So that's an interesting concept, Ethan. Um, appreciate you sharing that. Let's see. And Ethan also says, I put water mixed with powder Gatorade on the rings, and after a couple of days, I saw a gooey substance in the bottom of the bottle and the water on top. Have you tried different stuff mixed with water to see what happens? So to me, what that feels like is that it is because it's restructuring the water. It, to me, it feels like, so water becomes that original crystalline structure. Um, and let me see if I actually have a spot bookmarked in my dancing with water page. It dances with water book because sometimes I actually have a book here that has that page marked which I don't um, they'll show you a structure uh, they'll show you a picture of the restructuring of water of that hexagonal structure of H2O so basically what it seems like it's happening to me Ethan is is that it's allowing the um, the unbonding of everything else from the water molecule so all the heavier stuff dissipates and settles at the bottom um, Susanna, could you please explain how the activator creates a sacred space and how this is different from the mini pyramid? Yes, so the mini pyramids for sure are, you know, they're kind of a critter of their own cr producing that space of neutrality. Um, pardon me for a moment here. I didn't get to have all my dirty chai coffee this morning before we got on. <laughs> so I need to refresh myself. The activator is a tool that when we were first starting out and we made the coil, the tensor field generator, a ring, and then we had a Hedica, just the Hedica itself. Um, and as people had all of those specific tools, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five different tools, they were stacking them together like this just like this, they would put the coil inside the generator, they set the generator on the ring, and then they put the Hedica underneath of there. After we had so many people doing that, and then another gentleman who, who received all these downloads and lights and stuff, and 
he took pictures and showed us lights and it was pretty wild but what we found out after a while was is that those components created a specific kind of a field that was related to an an Atlantean tool um, so we were seeing that it was an Atlantean tool that was used to basically create a space um, and so we started putting them together as the activator the original activators had what they called weight of the fairy in it and they were trying to figure out what the heck weight of the fairy was and that was simply um, crushed up uh, fool's gold is what weight of the fairy was iron pyrite so we used to have iron pyrite around the outside and a hedica in the center and the coil and the generator in the ring. Those were the original activators. The activators have gone through several progressions through the years as, as we've got new tools. So this is the 3.1 version that has the harmonic creation field trio. It has a golden fire coil, a golden fire ring. Um, I can't remember. This one is the golden fire then it has within that trio then it has the 333 and the um, regeneration ring so this particular model here as all of the activators before it are basically creating a, a space that is okay let me step back the golden fire generator creates a larger space about two miles across so does this but then this field that comes out of this whole and complete unit is only about 200 feet across or smaller. It is a smaller field, but it is just a more intense field. Then the coil is helping with the spin and it's doing a connection into the earth. It's doing a connection farther up to bring in more of that light right outside of our planet. It's basically creating this column of light, just like when we do our Trinity breath. It is creating a column of light that is grounding, that is connecting, and it's holding a high vibration space only a few feet out, you know, like anywhere from 20 to 200 feet, you know, about 50 feet. And so within that 50 foot solid bubble, that is where it's such a high vibration space that's grounding, connecting, and that's creating the sacred space. And so we're seeing that, um, you know, you put this on a place that has a sacred site already, like the intersecting of geomagnetic lines is where all sacred sites on the planet are, is because the intersecting of geomagnetic lines will create a, a vortex, a portal. And within that geomagnetic vortex is where you find the sacred sites. So we have a sacred site right here in Buffalo Gap, South Dakota, that we built a giant rose quartz medicine wheel over top of. Our friend Mary, Mary who makes all of the, the Hedica rings that works at the studio, she's her and her husband are actually the ones who own that land and she is the portal keeper for that sacred site. Um, so we took one of the activators over there, we sat it on that sacred site and when we did it just allowed all those beings, all those little short beings with long noses that live in crystal cities down below the Black Hills of South Dakota in those crystal cities, they were all able to come up and be right there on the surface. Um, so sacred sites, um, sacred spaces. It's, uh, you know, the word sacred space has kind of been uh, a generic term a lot. But yeah, so the activators, even when you don't have a sacred space that you set it on, a sacred site that you set it on, it still creates a sacred space, which is basically clean, clear, and connecting. Um, do you think to make a new brass or silver wand tool, which has the golden fire and regeneration measurements? Yeah, actually, um, I don't have one sitting right here, but yeah, we're, I'm in the process of that, of making, um, I was just actually getting ready to twist the wire for some silver wire just to try out. So it's my intention to create, hey, look. Here's a shaman's wand made out of silver. Oh my goodness. I'm not gonna do any of this gauge anymore. That's that's a lot of silver. Um, and I'm still not that impressed with it. So what we're doing is a lighter gauge of silver to make a shaman's wand. Then on the center spire here is gonna be a brass tube, is my intention. We'll see how it works out a brass tube that carries the golden light wand measure, the standard 202 unit, 
and then have a copper, golden fire, infinity on the end. So we will have the silver, the brass, the copper, and we will have the three frequencies. So that's my intention is to make that wand here, hopefully this week, just to see how they are. Um, and again, we make prototypes and it takes a while for the prototypes to get released usually because we want to make sure that they are working right. We need to tweak the authority templates of them. Um, and then we need to do write-ups, photographs, all that fun stuff to get them um, actually put out online. So, but we do like to play with our, the tools a lot before we release them. Um, and then Marla asks, is there a difference between the Cosmic Sun Disk and the Golden Fire Taurus? They appear the same. Um, yeah, they're basically the Cosmic Sun Disk and the Golden Fire Taurus are simply one is made with the Golden Fire, one is made with the Regeneration. Um, within a certain space, they're the same. But then the Cosmic Sun Disk is working here, the Golden Fire Taurus is working here, but yet they have a field of intersection that is very similar to each other, doing similar work. Um, but yet the Cosmic Sun Disk to me is the one that is doing more opening for us, is the one that is working on our physical body more, as is as in clearing the denseness within our physical structure all the way down to the molecular level and putting that higher spin rate and bringing in more light into the tiny physical structure of the body. So, <clears throat> you know, unless you're really drawn to the golden fire Taurus, only if you're really drawn, I would rather go with the cosmic sun disc just because the cosmic sun disc is it's, it's changing us in a way that is bringing in more light clearing more dense energy and just more expansive and connecting. Um, the cosmic sun discs are phenomenal. The golden fire was too at its time, but to me, the golden fire, unless you, unless your soul is really drawing you and you're attracted to that golden fire Taurus more, um, I'd go with the cosmic sun disc. Uh, Bill asks, greetings, Brian. The twisted sage tools are based in a sacred cubit like the ancient megaliths. Please compare Twisted Sage tools with ancient megaliths. What is an expected result of filling the world with Twisted Sage tools? Thank you. <clears throat> so like the, the rod on here is, is a fraction of the STU, the standard TO2 econ unit. The STU is a cubit measure that was used to align the different temples within Teotihuacan in, in Mesoamerica. This STU measurement was also, from, from what we're understanding, it was also used in Egypt to align certain sites. Well, they all have a connection, pre-Egyptian and Teotihuacan. That's what we're showing with our ancient alien artifact stuff, is the connection between pre-Egyptian and Mesoamerican um, it just a larger culture at the time. But as far as how the tools are based on these megaliths, it's, it's not really that these are bringing through the energetics. Um, when we first discovered the STU, the standard TO2 econ unit, that straight line cubit measure was not producing a frequency, even though there were that, that, that measurement was found all over the planet, it wasn't emitting a frequency. We worked with that thing for about a month. And there's a whole long story on the creating of the harmony ring, which comes from the STU. And now that is a story in itself. And basically, once we anchored in the energetic counterpart to the STU, because it could have been here on the planet at one time, but then there was a disconnect. But now all those measurements of the STU out there on the planet are active and they're carrying that harmony field that balance and harmony field um so as far as the connection between the ancient megaliths and the tools there really isn't a solid direct connection or energetics being shared um you know even with our 60 degree pyramids you know the first ones that we were making were connected to the the pyramids in bosnia 
But anymore, the, the, the ascension pyramids that you can buy on the website are not connected to the Bosnian pyramids. It's only our one main structure that we have here at Twisted Sage that's connected to the Bosnian pyramid complex. Um, so yeah, there's not a huge connection between the energetics of, of the pyramids and the tools directly. Um, the other part of that question is, what is an expected result of filling the world with Twisted Sage tools? Well, in 2011, when we were channeling Slim, when we were talking with Slim, he gave us a message, and that message was basically that every time you create a ring, you are raising the light quotient on the planet. And so, for one, that's one thing, is that every time a tool is created, it's raising the light quotient. But for another reason that we want to have a Twisted Sage tool everywhere on the planet is because of what this does with consciousness. The number one thing is, <clears throat> and it always has been, is the expansion of consciousness on this planet. When people are conscious, when they're connected to their heart, connected to their higher soul self, source creator God, whatever it is, we shift. We no longer need to be here for fear, survival, war, trauma, all the stuff that comes from an unconscious being. So to me, having the golden fire generators out there in the world is shifting consciousness, having rings, having pendants. We are helping, I feel, to shift the consciousness of this planet one person at a time or maybe several people at a time that are within these fields. We've seen the golden fire generators change neighborhoods. It changes everybody beginning within their heart, their connection, then becoming more conscious. Um, that's the reason we make the tools. It's um, shift consciousness on the planet. Will green oxidization harm us over time when we wear copper? No, so actually when you are wearing a copper ring and your skin is a smart organ and will absorb as much copper as your body needs because our body needs a lot of copper. So when you're wearing it on your skin, your skin's a smart organ and it usually doesn't turn green. But when your skin starts to turn green, that means that your, that your body has told the skin, okay, we're not gonna absorb copper anymore. Your skin stops absorbing copper. So once you stop absorbing copper into your skin, it sloughs off and leaves that green patina on your skin. For the majority of people, we see that that comes from stress or dehydration, that the body is not absorbing any more copper. So there's only a very small percentage of people who just tarnish copper the second they touch it and that they just can't wear copper. Um, so yeah, it, and that's really why for like putting copper into a drinking vessel that we, that we don't recommend it um, because if you use a copper drinking vessel or copper within your drinking, that you basically need to ask your body every day if it's, if it's okay to drink that water because we can get too much copper through oral ingestion um, versus the skin, which is a, a very smart organ. Um, so Isla is asking, on a separate note, what would happen if we collectively anchored a column of light in certain individuals who do not serve humanity for its highest and greatest good? You know, and that's, okay, so, so that's really an interesting concept of the reason that I started doing light anchors in the first place was to shift, shift things that I perceived as dark, dense, malicious, things like that. And that's been a journey for me because anchoring columns of light, um, you know, in any time you were working from the heart space, and you are working with another consciousness, it is up to that soul on what happens. So that's really where, boy, this is a big question. So back in the time when, when people used to do energy work with other people, they had to ask permission because we were working mono a mono, person to person. So we'd ask the other person permission. Then once we started to do the higher work where we were working 
soul to soul basically we hold space for that person their soul chooses what occurs and that's still the way that we do work right now is that you know for the most part which we're stepping out of which we're going to learn today um, is that we are going soul to soul with the person we hold the field we hold the space kind of like what the golden fire generator does or any of these tools is that this creates a space that's about two miles across so every person within this field it is up to their soul what they receive from it um, this holds a space for releasing for clearing for grounding connecting activating a lot of different things this holds space for but it doesn't violate the free will of anybody it is up to the soul what occurs so that answers this you know that goes along the same question of anchoring columns of light into what we perceive as darkness or malicious beings or those who do, don't serve humanity um, because those types of things of seeing something as dark malicious not serving humanity that is the work that my sister and I and other PATH partners have done, you know, over the past decade is that we've gone through and we've cleared all these different beings, all these different things that we thought were violating the free will of humanity. But when we take a step back, we step back farther from all that of seeing and of judging things as dark, malicious, whatever. And then we begin to see that those are simply um they're all divine everything everything in creation is divine so we we as the human perspective are having the judgment of something that is um not divine so that's where we're doing that newer higher work um is is that way so with um Sorry, my daughter just stopped in. Hi, Joe. Sorry. Um, nine going on 16. Anyway, um, as far as... Uh, I lost my thought. I guess I should just stop and talk to her there. All right. So, anyway basically the whole thing with um, doing the clearing work of something that that is malicious we still see it as playing a part in the duality and that um, basically you know even all this stuff that we were clearing over the past 10 years all these different grid systems all these things that seem to be violating the free will of the human all that they were playing a part in the bigger picture as we step back they were all divine and they were playing their part in this duality creation and so as far as um anchoring lights into all this stuff that doesn't seem to serve humanity yeah shine your light because um it's not going to do any harm it's not going to affect anything greater um that's not supposed to be so yes shine your light and let it affect what it will and again, that's where we come from the heart space. Um, Christopher, can the golden fire length hold the golden fire and light wand or just the golden fire? So the the wand, let's see, where did the golden fire and light wand go? It dropped here on the floor. This guy. Just the one length itself will not the stu will hold and anchor in the golden light rod it will not the stu cannot handle the golden fire it will not anchor in the golden fire so we've created a few different rods over the years one is the golden fire and one is the golden light um, and so Sorry, technical difficulties there. All right. So 
the golden fire does not um, hold the uh, the golden light, um, or I'm sorry, the golden light rod that we made was separate, and then we made the golden fire rod, which is just simply holding both. So the golden fire will hold both. Um, the golden fire measure will hold both the golden fire and the but not vice versa. Sorry, my daughter's having issues here today. We're all going through some huge transformations. And these kids <clears throat> who are so sensitive are really going through the stuff because they, you know, they are being able to feel what is going on around them that most adults can't feel. So my daughter, who's so sensitive, she just picks up on everybody's stuff. Anyway, we are almost complete here, and then we'll do some um, do this journey work here in a moment, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, how do you view autism and other similar conditions as a part of consciousness? Autistic people can see so many different levels and layers that we can't. Um, it's it's a beautiful thing, um, you know. And you hear other people talk about how autistic children are, you know, they are high functioning in higher dimensions. Um, and they're just not made for our old world. Um, higher consciousness beings incarnated in the physical or more illness and imbalance based. I'm on the spectrum and feel it could be both these things. Yes. When autistic is, Simply, yeah, it's it's a higher spectrum. I mean, it is you're you're seeing things in a whole different way. You were born here to be in a different space, but you know that's it. Is we're shifting these spaces to be different, um, to where you know because these kids have all kinds of phenomenal gifts, telepathy, um, the way they see, all that stuff. How does the infinite light pennant affect the soul contracts? So basically, when we're doing clearing of soul contracts, it is holding the space for the soul to release the things that no longer serve it. Um, you know, the things that are ready to be completed or that you're just done with. And um, so the infinite light pendant, just like any of these higher spaces that are being held, it is, and especially with that golden fire. So the infinite light pendant has both the golden fire and the regeneration in it. The regeneration is going to be holding that highest aspect of all of you as possible. The golden fire is coming through and it is clearing, it is releasing. So using the golden fire along with the infinite light or along with the regeneration ring in this infinite light pendant is doing the majority of the soul contract clearing for us automatically. Um, once in a while, there's those things that come up that, um, we need to assist with through the consciousness work but for the majority of the contracts that no longer serve us these tools will clear it instantly all right we're going back to the message side over here um olivia's commenting regarding the new silver golden fire generator from what i recall it's mostly regeneration rings that are primarily increased with silver but not the golden fire Yes, so that's very true. So that little silver golden fire generator, the little one inch one, um, in silver it is no different than the one in copper. They're exactly the same energetics. Um, and why do we make that one? Good question. Some people still like the, the golden fire in the silver, like the question earlier about putting the silver generator inside of the water. So that's, um, you know, I myself would like to move away from making those little um, one inch golden fire generators out of silver. As a matter of fact, I think we have four of them right now and we probably will make those as the last four that we make. Um, so yeah, they're probably gonna go away too. Cause maybe we will make the little one inch Gaia spheres out of silver regeneration, maybe. Trying to talk my shop foreman into working at those. Will the regeneration Gaia sphere expand further if it is inside a golden fire Gaia? And so 
Not, no, not necessarily. So it's kind of when you put any of the fields together, like the 222, you put the 222 inside of a golden fire or, or whatever, the fields will still interact with each other, but because, okay, so let me go back to the question here. Um, if we put, if we have a golden fire Gaia, Gaia sphere that goes out about two miles across and we put the regeneration Gaia in it, which it only covers about a room. So that golden fire field that expands out farther does not have the capability to hold the energetics of the regeneration. So your regeneration is going to be, and your golden fire are going to work together within that field of the regeneration sphere. But then farther out, it's just only going to be the golden fire uh, because that golden fire field will not be able to carry that regeneration field. Um, let's see, a comment from Martin. There's a silver polish called Silvo that is superb for polishing silver. Awesome. Silvo is what Martin is suggesting as a product for silver polishing. Hi, Brian. Do you recommend using the Hedica Coaster along with the Water Rings Trio? Yes, I totally do suggest that. Now, this is the older coaster that has, I think, the Golden Fire. Our newer ones have the Regeneration. But if you use the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, all three sets of rings along with your coaster, yeah, it's just going to boost it that much more. And we've certainly considered making our coasters with the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, but they're, they're already, we're trying to keep the price on the coasters down as much as possible because, you know, all these are, these are a spendy little item and adding another $60 worth of rings. We really didn't feel like, you know, that was a good idea. Um, as, as far as the affordability factor, let's see, have you made the activators with the Gaia sphere golden fire with the with the golden fire Gaia? Yeah, there's actually, we have a friend who owns, um, one of these i mean we we have experimented with putting a gaia sphere inside of the activator or as the activator and it's not yeah it, it really wasn't enough of a difference to warrant creating a, a new tool that way um let's see and Awesome. Okay. We made it through the questions today. It's been that hour already. So let's move on and let's do some, some work here. Okay. So the quantum heart, it was about two weeks ago that I lost my sacred space of the heart. My sacred space of the heart's always been in the heart. And I lost it. Couldn't find it. But we've also been working with this thing called the quantum heart. Um, it's a field. Well, actually, so no, before the new ring came in, we were waiting for this new ring for several months now and um, waiting for it, waiting for it. And we could see it, feel it, but it just wasn't coming through. And then I think it was in towards the beginning of March, um, it came through, but it wasn't a ring. It was a newer energetic. And we were calling it the, the quantum, the quantum um, harmony is what we were calling it. And then that got anchored into all of the tools is this quantum harmony, which is also that field of neutrality. It's uh, the field of universal peace, all of that. And then we started doing that work. Last week we did the, um, the solar heart where we were connecting um, right in between the solar plexus, the golden light solar plexus, in the golden sacred heart, we were creating this new field of the, the, the solar heart, which is kind of a gateway into this quantum heart. So this whole thing with the quantum heart is that, um, it's kind of like we were also talking at one of these past seminar or webinars here, it might've been last week about the chakras and about how chakras are, we're seeing that they are turning into something completely different the chakra system for the human body it's like it's all coming up into the heart um you know and we're just seeing that for a few of us that's 
that's been happening, like my sister, and like for me with chakra migrations over the years. And um, so it's just another step in, in our interface as the human with creation, with our soul. And so this quantum heart, it's simply instead of being the heart space within your physical heart in the sacred space, the heart right there centralized and local, we ourselves as the human, as our field, as our body and our being are what is the quantum heart. Um, about a week ago, Brenda and I were, we were doing some really wild work as we've seen over the past few weeks where it is almost like these legs of creation come down and they're being finalized. The, these, these creations within duality. And it's like these creations are just done. They're ended because we're stepping out of the space of duality creation of the duality. And so these things that these legs of creation that come down through and um, they're just being done, they're being completed. And so it's, Oh gosh, this is so multi-layered layered and complicated just for the fact that we haven't been playing with this long enough to, to be able to grasp it because so many of these energies are just so outside of our awarenesses. Um, so the quantum heart, instead of going into all these tangents of stories and how this interrelates and how we found the quantum heart and, and activate it, we're just going to do the work and let you guys, um, you know, play with this. So when Brenda and I did it for a client the other day, because we were going through, she had a client that she couldn't get cleared, um, all this past life stuff and entity attachments, all this fun stuff. We couldn't get it cleared in the old way of coming in, doing the shining, the light, doing the activations, doing the work. We knew that we had to step up our game in a different way and do things differently. So we sat there for an hour, which is very unlike us having to spend that much time on, on doing energy work, but we knew that we had to create this new way. So basically it was using that field of neutrality, the field of universal peace of, of the quantum harmony, all of that, those are like fields and those fields are something. And I think we did this last week, we expanded the field out. And it was a soft, gentle, non-invasive, non-pushing field. But yet that field shifts and changes things immensely. The work with the quantum heart is beyond field frequencies, dimensions. Dimensions are frequencies. Fields, frequencies. Um, all of that is frequency. We are stepping into a space beyond frequency. It's consciousness. Um, well, and that's not your right, right word for it, but it's beyond frequency. So well, let's do the quantum heart activation and let you guys play with it and see where it goes here. Um, one disclaimer is hmm, we really don't know. We know that it is good but it pulls the rug out from under us. Um, for the past three days, we did it with everybody at the studio three days ago. We did a group thing because we did it with, um, like I say, a client who, who we couldn't clear in the old way and we cleared it into this new way um, of just basically activating the quantum heart. We have the soul come in, activate the quantum heart, and then this clear field is just, it radiates out, it's like an essence. It's your essence and it goes out into your reality and it shifts it. Um, very wild stuff. But ever since then, we've all been feeling very weird, unsettled, um, not in a bad way, but just in a way that we haven't been able to gain our footing again because we totally are stepping into something new. It's beautiful. Anyway, there's the disclaimer. Do this at your own risk, but it's a beautiful thing because your soul is involved and your soul is along. And so it's all in the highest and best good. All right, here we go. 
give you guys a pyramid to look at. All right. Let's take our breath in. Taking that deep breath in from the heart, into the heart from the earth. Taking that deep breath in from source, soul, creator, God. The third breath in from both earth and sky, bringing those energies together within your heart and expanding them out in both ways. All right. So now that you are grounded and connected and in the heart space, just ask to see your soul standing in front of you. You yourself are just that luminescent being. And then in front of you is your soul. To me, I'll usually see the soul as just this golden being, however you see your soul. You don't have to see it. We ask that the soul comes in and activates the quantum heart. So as we are in the sacred space of the heart, the quantum heart is simply all that we are, our entire field. So asking the soul just to come in, activate the quantum heart. Okay, now then, consider an issue that you have in your life, something that's affecting you, something that's been bothering you. Now you have that issue. Okay, now let it go. We just need a quick focus on what it was, and now then let's let it go. We're not going to try to fix it. We're not going to try to do anything. But we are going to radiate our essence that clear light or however you see it of the quantum heart into what it is that you brought up. So again, you are there in your physical outside of your physical within your, like your auric field. It's to me, it presents as this clear light. And as you are there, you just radiate out, you flow out, it just flows from you, from your field, that quantum heart. And it flows through those situations that you had in mind. Just letting it go. Let it do the work. Just surrender to yourself. The more you surrender to you, the more this works. All right. Now they're coming back to your physical body and your field around you. And see if you can distinguish this field. It's the quantum heart. It is you. And it's not really even a field, it's not a frequency. It's an essence of you. So this quantum heart is activated. You may still need to go into your heart space so that you can better access it consciously. So please do play with this. Take the three breaths, go into the heart space and then be within this field. All right. Please let us know if you have any experiences or any insights with this. 
and we'll discuss it next week for sure. All right. Thank you all for being here. Bye.